the title of today's class, The Mystery Concerning the Book of Job. The Mystery Concerning the Book of Job. We go into the book of Job and search and see what this mystery is because we hear all kind of rumors. Job is a Edomite. Job is a this. <laughs> all these false doctrines that are being taught by brethren trying to facilitate quite possibly their hidden wives to try and slip them in the kingdom. God knows. But Job is a Edomite. Let's go to the scriptures and see what the scripture, who is Job and what is the book of Job about. Open to Job chapter 27 and verse 1. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, As God liveth who had taken away my judgment, and, and the Almighty who had vexed my soul. So Job is saying what? It's a parable. The book of Job is a great big parable. <laughs> you need to understand. First and foremost, it's a big parable. Go to Job 29 and 1. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, it's, it's a big parable. It's a parable from, from verse 1 to the very last verse. Chapter 1, verse 1 to chapter 42, verse 16, where it ends. It's a big parable. Verse 17, sorry. 42 and 17. So we could be going, we were going and search the book of Job <laughs> and see what it's about. What is this big mystery? Job chapter 33, and we read verse 1. I read 1 to 6. Job 33, I read 1 to 6. Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches. So this is Elihu. He was rebuking and reproving Job. You see, after he three brethren come and, and um, Eliphaz and, and Belihu and um, Zophar, after they came, was after they came and, and was comforting Job. It was Eliphaz, yeah, Eliphaz, Bildad, sorry, Eliphaz, Bildad and Zophar. After Eliphaz, Bildad and Zophar was comforting Job, then Elihu was rebuking him. There's a reason why. Um, verse Job 33 and verse 1 again. Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches. So, Elihu telling him, Job, listen. He said, Listen, I, I pray that you, you give ear to what I'm about to tell you. Hear my speeches, what I'm about to tell you, and hearken to all my words. Listen to everything I'm about to say to you, Job. Behold, now I have opened my mouth, my tongue had spoken in my mouth. Elihu you know, said, My time to talk now, you just listen. <laughs> That's what he said. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart. He said, whatever is coming out of my mouth is of the uprightness of my mind. My mind. And my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. My lips shall do what? Elihu is saying, my lips, what is coming out of here, it shall utter knowledge clearly. Go to Malachi 2 and 6. What is he talking about? And you're going to find out who this Elihu is. Malachi 2 and 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. His lips should keep what? Knowledge. And they should see the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Go back to Job 33 and verse 3. Eli is telling Job, My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, clean and pure mind, and my lips shall utter knowledge. So the laws of God is going to come from my mouth. Eli is telling Job, because I am the messenger of the Lord of hosts. That's what he is telling him. So you need to understand. Who is this talking to Job? He said, after you listen to your three friends, it's a parable. This person coming now rebuking him now, telling him, You listen and hold your peace. <laughs> now we say, Hold your peace. Because God sent me to tell you something. The Spirit of God had made me, and the breath of the Almighty had given me life. This is what Elihu telling Job. The Spirit of God made me, and the breath of the Most Almighty had given me life. You see that? If thou canst answer me, set thy words in order before me and stand up. So you see, if you have anything to, 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 to answer what I'm about to tell you, you're that legitimate, set your words in order. You see what? Answer accordingly and uprightly. But verse 6, Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. He said, what? I am here in what? God's stead, instead of God speaking to you. That we telling you. Because I'm a what? Malachi 2 and 7, For the priest's lips shall keep knowledge, and they shall seek the Lord's mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. That was Elihu just stated to Job. I am a messenger of God. Verse 6, Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead, instead of God talking to you. He said, I am here. I am the messenger of God talk, telling you something. Hold your peace, Job. I also am formed out of the clay. I am formed of, from what? From the clay, from the dust. But I am a messenger of God in God's stead, instead of God in front of you. That's what he's telling him. You need to understand. You see that? You're being simple as that. Go to Exodus 4 and verse 14 to 16. What is he talking about? Exodus chapter 4, because you just read it in Malachi. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. Because when Musa, Musa was telling Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, let, let my people go. Let, and Moses said, well, I'm not, I'm learned, I'm not learned. He's, he's, he's talking about in Hebrew, because he went away for a while. 
and he wasn't fluent in Hebrew. So Moses said, get mad with him. He said, what, Aaron is with you? You don't worry about that. Just go. That's what Moses said. Moses was mad with him. Uh, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. Hebrew, he's fluent in Hebrew. This is about, he's more fr 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 frequent or fluent in Hebrew than you, Moses, because he grew up with Pharaoh. He said, what, he's fluent. Don't worry about that. I know that. The Moses said, I know that. And also, behold, he cometh now forth to meet thee. And when he see thee, he will be glad in his heart, in his mind. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth. He's most I say, what I tell him, tell him. But you put words in his, in, in his mouth. And will teach, and will, and with, sorry. And I will be his mouth. The most I say, you teach, you shall speak unto him, and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth. The most I say, I will be with your, your mouth, Job. You see that? I will be with, be with thy mouth, and what? And with his mouth, the most I say will be your, your mouth, Job, and with Aaron's mouth. And will teach you what you shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. Aaron is going to be your spokesman unto the people. You see that? Because he's more fluent in Hebrew. That's what the most I say. And don't worry about that, Moses. He's going to let him talk. Let him talk in Hebrew. You just tell him what I say. So the most I say what? I talk unto you. You're going to tell him what I say. What? And he shall be even... He shall be to thee instead of a mouth. So he's going to be what? Your mouthpiece. That's what Moses is saying. And thou, you, Mo, you, you are Moses, and thou shall be to him instead of God. You see that? You're going to be to Aaron instead of me. That's what Moses is saying. You're my messenger. You're the link between me and him and Aaron. And Aaron will be what? The link between you and the people. Because he is more fluent in Hebrew. So that's what he's talking about. Go to chapter 7 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, a lower case Jody. You are a God to Pharaoh. That's what Moses said. Don't fear him. Go and tell him I said, let my people go. Why? Just go and let my people go. And Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. You see that? So Aaron will be the prophet under you, Moses, because you are the messenger from me. You are the man of God. Why? Continue reading. I'll show you why. Thou shalt speak all that I, I command thee, and Aaron, thy brother, shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the train of Israel out of his land, because he is more frequent. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, his mind, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt, because I want to destroy him. I know hard me hard that he wouldn't let him go. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt. I will destroy Egypt, just I will destroy this diaspora, and my people, the children of Israel, and sorry, and bring forth mine armies, and do what? Destroy Egypt, destroy Pharaoh, and bring forth who? My people, the children of Israel, and my armies, out of the land of Egypt by great judgment. He needs to pay attention. <laughs> he said, I will bring forth my armies, the children of Israel, and my armies. This is out of the diaspora. Who's here? The children of Israel, and my armies. You need to pay attention. Go back to Job 33. And verse 6 again. Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I will, um, Eli, you tell in Job. I am in the messenger of God. You see that? Instead of God talking to you. So you hold your peace. I don't want to hear you talking now. Hold your peace. I am also formed out of the clay. I'm, I'm formed from the clay just like you. Because let us go down and make man from the dust of the ground. Like in our image and likeness. That's what the most I say. Go to Job chapter 32. And read it from 1 to, 30, 1 to, 1 to 22. Job 32, 1 to 22. So these three men ceased to answer Job, which is what? Um, Eliphaz, Bildad, right? Eliphaz, Bildad, and what's the third one? Um, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zohar, Zophar, sorry. Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zohar, Zophar, which is Job, three, three, three friends. So, so you say what? And these men, Job 32 and 1. So these three men ceased to answer Job because they were con conversing with Job when he's going through trials. Because he was righteous in his own eyes. He was what? Righteous in his own eyes. Pride, 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 pride. That's what he's talking about. He was righteous in his own eyes. Pride, full of pride. That's what that why Elihu said, What? Shut up now. You listen. I'm going to talk because I'm the messenger of God. Musa says, Shut up. <laughs> that we say. That must kindle the wrath of Elihu. Who? The wrath of Elihu. The wrath of God. They see the same thing. Then was kindled. He, 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 he get inflamed. The wrath of Elihu, the son of Barachel, the Buzo, the Buzite. Of the kindred of Ram against Job. Against Job was his wrath kindled because he justified himself rather than God. You see, that's what Job was saying, but I keep the laws. I perfect. I kept the laws perfect. This is how God led us to me. How did that's what you talking about? You go, go in the class and show you why. Because he justified himself rather than God. He said, Who is you that I can punish you? That Moses said, Who are you that I won't try you behind? Who are you that I won't take all that I know you love? You see that the thing that they lost the most, the thing that they covered the most. I will take it away from you and try it. You see that? All them dreams you have. The most I say, no, I'll cut that down because I want you. You I want is about you. It's not about, it's not about everything. It's about, no, everybody, not about everybody. It's you. I come for you. That's what the most I say. And also, against his three friends was his rod kindled. You see that? Against the same three of them. 
kill a human, a man against them too. Because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Job. You see that? They couldn't get the understanding and they could, they could write more. Now, Elihu had waited till Job had spoken because they were elder than him. He, what? he waited because they were elder. They were elder than him. They were elders to him. They were seniors. So he, what? he kept his order. He knew his place. He kept his place. And then what? He let it loose. When he got the opportunity, he let it loose. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. And Elihu, the son of Barashel, the Buzite, answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Your senior is here, your elders. Wherefore I was afraid, and does not show you my opinion. He said, I was afraid because I respected your elders. He said, that I didn't, I didn't <laughs> want to give all my opinion. I love to talk and discourse. I said, they should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. So he said, all the, the, the elders, so all they should have the wisdom. All they should be teaching wisdom. But what? But there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty give them understanding. So you see what? There's a spirit in man, the spirit of God and the spirit of Christ. That we see what? That the inspiration of the Almighty give them understanding. Is that that's is the Holy Spirit that will come to give you the understanding of this book. To give you the understanding of what this book is about. What is the mysteries in this book? What is the hidden, the dark parables and the dark scenes in this book? You see what? There's a spirit in man, with, and the inspiration of the Almighty give them understanding. The inspiration of the Most High God is that spirit is going to give you understanding of what this whole thing is about. That we see, so you see what I love the seniors talk, but now the most I say, go and talk now, shut it down. Great men are not always wise, you see, because all of us, the seniors are respected all of you, but now I see the, all of us just know that it didn't work. And the most I say, go and shut it down, go and go and reprove, reprove Job, reprove them, all of them. Great men are not always wise, neither do the age understand judgment. You see, what? neither do they understand judgment because Job is what, according to this thing, he was righteous in his own, own eyes and he's justifying himself, verse one and two. Rather than God. You see that? Why God take out my children? Why I keep all the laws? I was perfect. That was the most I see. It. Justifying itself. Humble. The most I has is a mystery. You, my ways are not your ways. The most I ways is not your ways. That we, that's where Eli is trying to tell you. Let him understand. The most I God ways is not your ways, Job. You don't worry. <laughs> you keep the laws and what? Stop, stop justifying yourself. Just take your affliction, keep it moving. Why? Therefore I said, hearken to me. So Eli, you say, that's the reason why I say hearken to me because all it, all it making sense. That we say. All in that making a sense, the Spirit of the Lord come into me and tell me, shut it down. Let me see. But there's a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty give them understanding. That's what he said. Now I have, because I have the understanding from the Most High that we're talking about. Um, Therefore, I said, hearken to me. I also will show my opinion. Time for me to talk. That's verse 10. Verse 11. Behold, I waited for your words. You say what? I listened and I listened to all the discourse. I listened. I waited for your words. I gave ear. To your reasons, to your what you're rationalizing yourself, you see that? As to why the most I afflict you, as to why the most I kill the children. That's what we say. Now. Why? Why? Why I get sick? Why? We say like you say, listen and I listen. What? Verse 12. Yea, I attended unto you. And who is the you talking about Eliphaz, Belayu, Bildad, and, and Elihu? You say what? Yes, I attended unto you. I listened to all the tree. Behold, there was none of you that convinced Job. For that answer this word. He said, not that you only convince him or only justify, you know, what, what he was saying. Or give him sense. Make sense to him. Lest you should say, we have found out wisdom. You see that? God trusted him down, not man. He said, what? The most I will flick you behind. Not no man. He said, so, only, only, if only the spirit, the spirit of God, verse, um, verse 8, but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty give them understanding. That's what he said. If you don't have that spirit of God, and that inspiration, you can't give him understanding. You can't make sense to him. You can't rationalize what he's, what he's, he's split, um, splitting up. Lest he should say we have found out wisdom, God trusted him down, not man. He said the most I will afflict him and, and put it into death and afflict him in sickness. You need to understand. No, he had not directed his words against me. Neither will I answer him with your speeches. You see what I want to hear? Holy. I will answer him, thus said the Lord. They were amazed. You see what? They were what? Amazed. They answer no more. They shut up. When they see this young, this young man, they shut up speak with that, with that authority. They're like, wow. <laughs> they were amazed. They answered no more. And they left off speaking. So they hold his peace. When I had waited, because they understood. Why is he speaking like that? The Spirit of the Lord had to be on him. You see that? When I had waited for, they speak not, but stood still and answered no more. So they hold the peace. I said, I will answer also my part. I also will show my opinion. <laughs> you like you say I will give my opinion. I will give what make some sense of this madness. For I am full of matter. The spirit within me constrained me. You see what? I am full of what? Matter. The most I give him wisdom and understanding. You see what? And the spirit was what? Constrained him. It was holding him, holding him and giving him recognition as they are lost. Let him discourse. 
But behold, my belly is as wine, which at no vent, it is ready to burst like new bottles. He said, what my belly is like, it's like, like wine. I'm ready to burst. Time, to, time for me to talk. That's what he said. Most I say, I hear enough. Time for you to talk. Go and speak. Verse 20. I will speak that I may be refreshed. I will open my lips and answer. I will give Job the sense of why most I afflict him. He said, what? I will speak that I may be re refreshed. I will open my lips and answer. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. You like you say what? I ain't no respect a person. <laughs> I'm going to say, thus said the Lord. No respect a person. I'm going to say, thus said the Lord. Neither let me give flattering titles unto man. I don't care who you are. That's what he said. To, give, to glorify you because you, you, you have wealth, because you have position, because you have authority, because you have property. The Messiah said no, because you have money. The Messiah said no. No. Elijah said no. I am with no respect a person and I am giving no flattering titles to no man. For I know not to give flattering titles. That's not in my spirit. That's not the reason I'm here. In so doing, my maker will soon take me away. He said, if I do that, I respect a person of flattering people. You see what? Most of will kill you behind. That's what he just said. <laughs> you need to understand. He said, he will put you to death. You see that you need to understand and stop playing with the Mosai. Go to Job chapter 33. And I read in 1, one, down. one to 20, 33, right through. Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches. He say what? Eli, you say, Job, listen to what I to tell you. And hearken to all my words. Listen and understand to everything I tell you. Behold, now I have, I have opened my mouth. My tongue has spoken in my mouth. He say what? A time for me to talk. Let me talk. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, of his mind. Straight, honest words. And my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. He say what? Knowledge clearly. Because Malachi 2 and 7 say what? The priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth. He said, I'm going to speak according to the most I go. Thus your Lord, lawfully. What? Why? And the breath of the Almighty had given me life. The Most High God is the Spirit of God. You see that the Holy Spirit is in Him. That we're talking about. If thou can answer me, set thy words in order before me and stand up. He said, if you have any answer to gainsay, to gainsay me or shut me down, say. But otherwise, hold your peace. Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's sake. Because God sent me as a representative to address you, to give you some sense. I also am formed out of the clay. I'm a man just like you. Verse 7, Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid. He said, what? My what? My terror shall not be, make thee afraid. He said, I'm speaking to you stern. <laughs> stern, but what? Don't, be, don't, be, don't worry. Don't be, don't be fearful. Neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. Surely thou hast spoken in mine, heart, mine hearing, and I have heard the voice of thy word saying, I am clean without transgression. I am innocent. Neither is there iniquity in me. He said, well, I listen to you on your discourse with, with um, Eliphaz. Bildad, you see that? And Elihu. I listened to all the discourse. You see what? That's not Elihu. Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. He said, I listened to all the discourse. And what? All the justifying yourself. You only justifying yourself. You ain't break the law. I keep all the law. Why? Why? I am innocent. I didn't, I didn't, do, no, I didn't do no sin. But why? Why are you killed my children? Why are you afflicting me? That's what you see. And I listen to you all the time. Why? Behold, he find that occasions against me. He's saying what? The most I will find an occasion against you. He's saying, he's, that what Eli is saying. You're accusing the most I just um, afflicting you just read unjustly. That's what he's saying because he's saying you're innocent. He's saying you're clean. You do no transgression. But why the most I afflicting you? Behold, he find that occasions against me. You're accusing the most I of afflicting you unjustly. That's what, the most, that's what Job is saying. And that's what Eli is telling Job. He put at my feet in the stocks. He marked all my parts. He do what? He marked all my paths. Go to Hosea 5 and 14. Job is saying, <laughs> he marked all my paths. The Mosai marking all his paths. So you're accusing the Mosai. Hosea 5 14. For what I will be unto Ephraim as a lion, as a young lion in the house of Judah. I, even I will tear and go away. I will take away and none shall rescue him. So the Mosai is saying, I will be like a lion to Ephraim, the northern ten tribes. That's what the Mosai is saying, the northern ten tribes, which is Israel. So Job, um, Eli is telling Job, you, you're accusing the Mosai of being like marking you, like a lion, as he said he going to be to Ephraim. You're justifying yourself. Verse 12. Behold, Job 33 and 12. Behold, in this thou art not just. You see that? Eli, you say no. But you're clean and you're, you're in transgress and you're innocent. No, you're not just. You say what? In, in, um, behold, in this thou art not just. I will answer thee. Eli, say, Eli, Eli you say, I will give you some understanding. Pay attention. That God is greater than man. He said, the most high is greater than man. You don't know the most high ways is not your ways, Job. That we tell him, humble. Why does thou strive against him? Why are you striving against the most high? You're justifying, you never break the law. Keep the law. Why me? Why me? Do you say, why are you striving with the most high? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. The most high ways is not your ways. That's what Job say. That way I'm Eli telling Job. The most high is just flicking it behind. Take it. Endure it. That we tell him it's not you don't have the understanding that he has. There's a reason behind everything. There's a reason behind it. 
For he giveth not account of any of his matters. He doesn't justify himself to no man. The Most High justifies himself to no one. For God speaketh once. He said, The Most High speak what? Once. Yea, twice. He speak twice. <laughs> what? What? Yet man perceiveth it not. Men don't understand the, the, the deep mysteries behind it. You see that you read one verse and say, Yeah, Jesus loves all. He loves all people. You don't understand. Read the verse again. Read the verse again. If you're keeping the law, you're going to see what that verse we're really talking about. It's ten words, but there's a deep, deep mystery behind it. You need to understand. The most I speak once, yet twice, yet man perceiveth not. They don't understand. They don't comprehend. In a dream, when he's sleeping in the night, in a vision of the night, when in deep sleep, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, when he's sleeping in the bed in the night, then, then, at that point, the, he opened the ears of men, your, your ears, and sealed the instruction. That's what he said. That's when he get the instruction. What are you about to do next day? The Moses says, every night I see the instruction. You see that? <laughs> that he may withdraw man from his purpose. That's the reason for man saying, I do this. I do that. But both Job was doing and saying, I am clean. I am without I am break the law. I am innocent. I never violate the law. I'm in the midst of sin. I'm a man who was perfect. He was a man who was perfect. He, that's what the Mosai said. I mean, if you pay attention to the Mosai, he could withdraw you from your purpose. But you making yourself, I, I good. I innocent. Justifying yourself. That's what he's talking about. I will guide your path. He keep it back his soul from the pit. By doing that, he keeping you back from what? Destruction. From hell. <laughs> but the Mosai said, I have to give them instruction every night. To keep them back from the old, doing their own will. Free will that will get you killed. Are we saying? He keep it back his soul, soul of man from the pit, and his life from the perishing by the sword. The sword will get put to death. The sword is that the sword of the Lord, the wicked of the earth. This is that we need to understand. He keep it back from the sword. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed. The most I say, will I use revealing to Job? The most I will afflict you. <laughs> you will afflict your body. There's a reason behind everything, and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. You're gonna afflict your body, you get ailments. There's a reason behind it. So that his life abhorred bread and his soul dainty meat. What happened to Job? The same thing, you afflict him. You see that? And he, he, he don't have appetite to eat nothing. He don't want no meat. He don't want nothing. It's a Mosai tune. It's a parable. It's a deep parable. You're going to see where it's going. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen. He will pine away. It's only fat gone. You see that? And his bones that were not stick, that were not seen stick out. You see that? All the color bones sticking out. He's like, he's like he's farming. He in Biafra. Deep farming. Yeah, his soul dread near unto the grave and his life to the destroyers. You see that? He, going, he look like he's going to die any time. He going, look like he's going to die. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness. You see that? If there be what? A messenger of the Lord. And a what? An interpreter of the Lord. The most I see what? He see the instructions. He give you what? He speak once, he speak twice. So if that messenger, that man of God, will interpret to the man to save him from going down to the pit. That he is gracious, verse 24, unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. The most I go tell the messenger, what? Go on, go on, go on deliver him. Go on, go on tell him what I mean. Go on, what? To save him from going to death, to hell, death and destruction. I have found the ransom. You see that? The ransom is with Christ. You see that? The ransom sacrifice. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. His what? His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He's going to be what? Renewed or rejuvenated if you keep the laws, keep the commandments, and you take the instructions of the messenger of the most high that we're talking about. You need to pay attention. The man that is said in God sent in God's stead, you're going to be refreshed as what? As a child. That was Matthew 18. Go to Matthew 18 and chapter 1. So, so Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. Verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Yahushua, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yahushua called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted. Means what? You repent or return to God's laws and become as little children and humble as a little child. You see that? You shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. If you don't be humble and to that messenger of God, you see that? Or the interpreter from God or that man in God's stead and become as a child and lap up the words that he's telling you. Lap up the message that he's sending to you. You shall no eyes enter the kingdom of heaven. No immortality for you. Every time you're going to die right here. Your soul will be destroyed. Not talking about your physical death in no coffin. Your spirit, your soul will be destroyed when they will return. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You're going to get immortality. And whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name, receive at me. And whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it will be better for him that a millstone will hang around his, about his neck and that he will drown in the depth of the sea. So if you offend one of them little ones, one of the elect that's going to follow Christ, he say what? But they kill yourself. Don't let me get my hands on you. That we talking about. That we talk. Woe unto the world because of offenses. Because you're offending the ones that follow me. Destruction. For it must needs be that offenses will come because you have children of the devil, children of God. That we, that's all he's telling. They will be offenders. 
But woe to that man by whom the offense come. That child of the devil who's going to try to stumble you from keeping the laws of God, he said, destruction to him when I come. You need to understand. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off. He's talking about people, what? That one, who, that man by whom the offense come in. Children of the devil, you see that? <laughs> if thy hand offend or, or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life, hold and maimed, or to the kingdom of heaven, or immortality. You see that? Without the bundle of friends. You see that? Without the bundle of wicked family members, or without the bundle of wicked friends. That we're talking about. You get immortality. Cut them off. That we, if they want to get in the way of you becoming a child of repenting, or converting, and coming back and listening, and following the laws of God. Cut them off. Separate from the means. They mean, me saying, sever from them. You need to understand. Rather than having two hands, a multitude of wicked friends, and a multitude of wicked families, or siblings, or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire and get killed. That we tell him. And get burned, destroyed destruct when I come. That we, that's all he's telling him. Take heed that he despise not one of these little ones. You see that? You need to understand. For I say unto you that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. He said, the angels watching you. That we're talking about. Because they were with him from the beginning. They were elect. He said, be mindful they don't offend them. That we, that's all he was just saying. Be mindful. Go back to Job 33 and verse... 25, the flesh shall be fresher than a child. If you listen, that we say into the interpreter, the messenger, the most high God, that we die with Eli, telling Job, listen and stop being prideful. Do you see that? Listen and justify yourself. He shall pray unto God and he will be favorable unto him and he shall see his face with joy for he will render unto man his righteousness. See, that we say, if you listen to me, you're going to pray and the most high God will be favorable unto you. If you humble yourself instead, instead of trying to justify yourself. I was perfect. I keep all the laws. I have no, no flaws. That we sin. It's okay. Let the most I do his thing. Most I ways is not your ways. That we tell him. Take your affliction <laughs> and just keep praying. Keep them commandments. Keep it going. That's what we think. Keep the laws. Keep them laws. Keep them commandments and keep it going. He look at upon men and if any say, I have sinned. So the most I is watching you to see what? If you say, any man say, I have sinned. I have what? Sin. Confess his sin. And perverted that which was right. The laws of God confess your sin, acknowledge that I have violated God's laws, and it profited me not. You see that? And we end up scattered in the diaspora, in the, four, in, the, in the four winds, in captivity, in servitude. You see that? Because what? Confess your sins before the Most High. That we say, if it, he looketh upon men, and if any man say, I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, the laws, and, uh, the laws start his commandments, and it profited me not, it benefit me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit. And his life shall be the light. That's what the most I going to save you. When you confess your fall before him, go on, get on your knees, stretch out, stretch arm, and pray to the most I and ask him. Tell him everything you do between you and him. In nobody business outside. You see, no, 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 no priest to go and confess nothing to no priest. Go between you and the most I, outstretch your hand, bow your head, and tell him everything you do. Everything you do. Don't hold nothing back. That's, that's confession. That will the most I say. He will deliver his soul from going down. You see that? Into the pit. That will Luke 13 and she talk about. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. If you don't come and confess, you see that? If you don't confess and say, I have sinned, I have done wickedly, you see that? And most of them are going to deliver you, going to leave you, because they'll be being arrogant, they'll be in your justifying yourself. That we're talking about. To bring back his soul from the pit. The objection, objective is to what? Bring back your soul. Save your soul from the pit. Did he say your flesh? From going and dining and going and coughing. Your soul is your soul, it's at stake here. That's why they're teaching you. That's why a lot of our people don't even understand. Your soul is going to get destroyed. That's what he's talking about. To take, turn back his soul, to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. Mark well, O Job. Like you say what? Listen, Job. Hearken unto me. Listen to the message. Become the messenger from God. Hearken unto me. Hold thy peace. He say what? Hold thy peace, and I will speak. If thou hast anything to answer, say, speak, for I desire to justify thee. If not, hearken unto me. Hold thy peace, and I shall teach thee wisdom. He say, if you don't have nothing legitimate to say. Shut up and listen to me. I'm going to give you what? Teach you wisdom because I'm a messenger from God. You see that? Instead of God, verse 6, in, in God said, I am most like God sent me to correct you and to guide your path, to save you from death and destruction and hell. So you're going to understand what, what the mystery concern in the book of Job is about. Job chapter 1, verse 1 down. Everything 1 to 22. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. There's a man in the, what? In the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Go to, uh, who is Job? Go to um, second, go to Genesis 46, 13 first. Go to Genesis chapter 46, verse 13 first. Who is this Job? Because they say, Job is a Edomite. Job is a Edomite. That's what they hear, they go over and over on the streets, and these, these, these Israelites teaching, 
Job is an Edomite. Genesis chapter 46 verse 13. Let's see if they're messengers of God. This is going into, well, start from verse 1. And Israel, you see that? Or Jacob, this is Jacob, the forefather of the twelve tribes. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. The, the, and God spake unto Israel in the vision of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, here, here am I. So that his name was already changed to Jacob when he, after he fought with the angel. So it's what? It's, this is talking about who? Israel or Jacob, our forefather. Go to jump to verse 8. And these are the names of the children of Israel. Which came into Egypt, Jacob and his sons Reuben and his sons. Jacob is Israel, his twelve sons. Reuben, Jacob firstborn, jump to verse ten, and the sons of Simeon. So he's giving you the the, the, the the sons of Jacob. Simeon, verse eleven. Levi, verse twelve. Judah, is the verse thirteen. Pay attention. And the sons of Issachar. So Issachar is what the one, two, three, four, five. The fifth son. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar was the fifth son. Fifth son. And the sons of Issachar. So Issachar's sons is who. Tola, and Pufa, and Fufa, and Job, and who? And Job, and Shimron, and who? And Job, and Shimron. So Job is the son of who? Issachar. You see that? The fifth son of Jacob, of Israel. That's where Job comes from. You need to pay attention. Job is the Edomite. You see that? The no, no spirit of God is on you. The spirit of the devil. Spreading false doctrines to justify your wickedness. This is <laughs> Go to um, First Chronicles 7 and verse 1. First Chronicles chapter 7 verse 1. First Chronicles 7 now. Now the sons of Issachar, did you see that? The fifth son of Israel, Israel of Jacob, were Tola, the same Tola, Pua, and who? Jashub. The Job is Jashub in, in Hebrew, you see that? Jashub. <laughs> Jashub and Shimron, the same four sons, the four sons. Go back to um, Genesis 46 and verse 13. And the son of Issachar, Tola, Puva, and Job, and Shimron. You see that? Job is just Jashub. Same. Yeah, same Job. You see that? Israelite. You see that? Jacob's grandson. Job is a Edomite. Simple as hell. <laughs> the, the mysteries of the, you're going to see, give me the mystery concerning the book of Job. What is the book of Job about? Go back to Job 1 and verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job or Jashub. And that man was perfect and upright or Yashub. And one that feared God, Yashu, and eschewed evil. He, you see that? He resented evil. He hated evil. Because he was, he was keeping the law. He was perfect. So that way we read in the book, in, in Job 23, he was justifying himself. I didn't do nothing wrong. I was perfect. So why this happened to me? Why? Why? That's, what, that's why um, Eli, you have to rebuke him. Don't worry. The most I ways is not your ways. There's a reason why the most I going to trust in you. And we're going to see it and we're going to touch it here. Why? Verse 2. And they were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Unto Job was born what? Seven sons and three daughters. Go to Mark chapter 6 and verse 38. Mark 6 verse 38. Mark chapter 6 verse 38. Unto Job was born seven sons and three daughters. Mark 6 and 38. He said unto them, How many loaves have you? This is the parable Christ has given me the loaves. Go and see. And then they knew. And when they knew, they said, Five. And two fishes. There are five loaves and two fishes. And he commanded them to make to, to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. That's a multitude. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of fragments and of fishes. You see that? And they did eat of the loaves were about five thousand men. So five thousand men, he had five fishes, he had sorry, five loaves, two fishes, you see that? Five thousand men ate, and they had what, twelve baskets. Five and five is the ten northern tribes. The twelve baskets full of fragments is the twelve tribes, the United Kingdom, Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom. You see that? You need to understand. It's the twelve tribes of Israel he's talking about, it's all parables. It's parables, the twelve tribes of Israel. Five loaves, five thousand men, ten. Two fishes, twelve tribes. Ten tribes, ten northern tribes, two southern tribes, the two fishes. Ten and two, twelve. Twelve, all twelve tribes. Twelve baskets full of fragments, verse 43. You need to understand, pay attention, stop being simple. You need to stop being simple. Um, Mark 8 and verse 19. Mark 8 and 19. And when I break this, is, and when I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took you up? So he's asking them again, Yahushua. 
When I break the five loaves among and I feed five thousand men, five and five is how much? Ten. The ten northern tribes. You need to understand. Because it's Issachar or, or, or um, not Issachar, um, Ephraim. Ephraim, not, not Issachar. Ephraim was the head of the ten, northern ten tribes. They call them Ephraim sometimes or Israel. Well, when I break the five loaves among the five thousand, which is the ten northern tribes, how many baskets, fragments took he up? They say unto him, twelve. Twelve tribes. You see that? Judah, Judah and Israel. United, twelve tribes. Divided, ten northern kingdom tribes. Two southern kingdom tribes. That's all he's talking about. It's parables. <laughs> you see, that you pay attention. And when the seven, and when the seven among four thousand, when the what? Seven among four thousand. How many baskets full of fragments took he up? And they said seven. So seven and seven is what? Fourteen. Seven. You see that? Among seven, among the four thousand, how many baskets of fragments you get? They say seven. Seven and seven is fourteen and four thousand. Fourteen one four. 4,000, 4, 144,000. You see, they need to pay attention. The Revelation 7 is talking about the 144,000. It's, it's all parables, it's mysteries. Go back to Job. They pay attention. Job chapter 1 and verse 2. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters, the ten northern tribes. His substance also was 7,000 because Job was who? Of who? Issachar, northern kingdom. <laughs> He's northern kingdom. He's the, but the Issachar, the fifth son, that's Issachar's son. Yahu or Job, he was the, the he's of the northern kingdom, and there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters, seven and three is ten, the ten northern times, he's northern kingdom, that's what the book is saying. His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels, you see that? And five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred chia chiasses. Seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels. Seven and three is how much? Ten. Ten northern tribes. And five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she has it. Five and five is how much? Ten. Northern, northern kingdom, the northern ten tribes. That's all he's telling you here. Job is from the northern kingdom, northern ten tribes. And his sons went and feasted in their houses. Northern kingdom was having what? A time. They feasted in their houses every one his day. Because what they were celebrating, they were their birthdays, and sent an idolatry, and called for their three sisters. You see that? Seven and three. Ten again. To eat and to drink with them. To do what? To eat and to drink. Have a time. To eat and to drink with them. Eat and drink with them. That was Hosea, the whole book of Hosea is private. Hosea is talking about. Moses said, could be like a lion to you and a leopard. Hosea 5.13. Because they, they went after idols. Ephraim, northern kingdom, went after idols. That we're talking about. And it was so, Job 1 and 5, it was so when the days of the feast sin was gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Why would he be offering? Because they're in the midst of sin, celebrating what birthdays. You see that? Everyone is there. Everybody, would, when is your birthday? Be going and have a time. We have that talking about. And he had to sacrifice in the morning after them for sin. Sacrifices for what? Sin, burnt offerings. According to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, the children in the midst of sin, that we sin, and curse God in their hearts, in their mind. Because by trans, by sin, sinning is cursing God in your mind. You, you pay attention. This is the Bible. It said what? It may be that my sons have sinned. Sin. And curse God in their heart, in their mind. So when you're not keeping God's laws, you're cursing the Mosai in your mind. That's the Bible is saying what it's saying. It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their, in their hearts. You see that by violating God's laws or refusing to keep God's laws, you're cursing Him. Thus did Job continue to certain sacrifice to save their life. That's what we're talking about. Animal sacrifice for sin. Now there was a day when the sons of God, so they're going to you all children of Israel in the diaspora. When you're not keeping God's law, you're cursing the most high. That's why you have us subjugated and punished, being under oppression in the, in the diaspora. For you, you're, 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 you're giving the most high your middle finger. That's what we're telling you. Once you not do what I tell you to do, you see that? It's like your father tell you, do this, do that, and you don't want to do it, and he box it down. That's what the most high said. The same thing, you're cursing me off. You're disobeying me. You're paying a man, he said, two, two, two man, not kill even one whole. You see that? One captain inside of here. That's what he said. The most I say, what? You took two of you can be captain. You're cursing me. Does the Job continue sacrificing for them? So the most I will put them to death. You need to pay attention. That's all he's saying. Go to um, burnt offerings. Go to Genesis 8 and because Job can give burnt offerings um, daily, right? Genesis 8 and 20. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. What's the purpose of burnt offerings? Genesis 8 and 20. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the, offer, off, on the altar for sin, for sin. That was all sacrifices for sin. That you need to pay attention. That's all it's talking about. That's what it's talking about. Um, go to verse 11. Verse 11. 
But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he had and he will curse thee to thy face. That we saying, sin, sin. Is you cursing what? If it's, it's sin. If you're transgressing the law, it's sin. That's all he's talking about. Go back to verse Job 1 and verse 6. Now there was a day. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Stop. When the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and what? And Satan came also, also among them. So the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. You see that they say, angels went down. Angels went down. Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So you see, the angels sleep with women. <laughs> The angels sleep, and you crazy yourself. But angels sleep like human beings, you're burning behind. It's impossible to happen. You can't. They come close to the burning in the midst of sin. They're burning behind. You melt. That we say, but what is it talking about? Between the sons of God. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. So that's why the most I decrease here, the, the longevity of, of the, the lifespan. Because they were living up to, up, about a thousand years in those days. The generation was a thousand years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, with the sons of God, sorry, after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and the same became mighty men, which were old men of renown. So the same what? The angels live with men, and they build big giants. Let's see who the sons of God is. Go to Exodus 4 and verse 22. Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. Who is these sons of God? Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Children of God and children of the devil. When you reach in, read in the Bible coming from Genesis, there was children of God. Who? Adam was who? A child of God. You see that? Adam, Noah, Methuselah, Enoch. They were the lineage of the children of God. That's that what he's talking about. The children of God who... We're going, to, we're going to touch it a little earlier. Go to Psalms 82 and 6. Psalms chapter 82, verse 6. Psalms 82, verse 6. Who is these sons of God? Psalms 82 and verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of ye are the children of the Most High. Children of God from Adam. Adam and his lineage, his progeny. Adam, Seth, coming down. You see that? Noah, Enoch, call them coming down through the lineage. Line, um, Job, they are all children of God. Jacob, you need to understand. Abraham, they are all children of God. Coming right down to Christ. David, that's what we're talking about. Ye are gods, the children of Israel. Are we talking about? Same thing coming down from Jacob. The children of Israel, same children of God. Ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes, because what? You have sinned and you curse God. That tell him, that's why you're going to die like princes. If you're not keeping the law, you're cursing the Most High, and you're going to die like one of the regular men, the princes of the earth, the children of the devil. That we're talking about, children of Satan. You need to pay attention. That's what he's talking about. Go to Luke chapter 3 and verse 38. Luke 3 and 38. Luke 3 and verse 38. I'll read from um, verse 23. And Ahushua himself began to be about 30 years of age, of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph. You see that? Which was the son of Eli. Eli, Eli. So he, um, Ahushua was the son of Joseph. Son of Joseph. This is the lineage of Christ. Where does the lineage come from? Sperm, bloodline, bloodline. Jump to verse 31, which was the son of David, which was Nathan, Nathan was the, which was the son of David. So he's giving it the lineage coming, where Christ come from. Bloodline, he's giving it bloodline going back up, which was what? I jump in some verses just to show you. Which was the son of Judah, verse 34, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac. So Jacob begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, Jacob begot Judah. This is that coming right down to David, to, Ju to Joseph, to Christ. He's giving it the lineage. Um, jump to verse 36. Um, and Aphrak said, which was the son of Shem. Which was the son of Noah. You see that? So Shem was the, the son of Noah. Noah, which was the son of Lamesh. Which was the son of Methuselah. Which was the son of Enoch. Which was the son of Jared. Which was the son of Mal Malil. Which was the son of Canaan. Which was the son of Enos. Which was the son of Seth. Which was the son of Adam. Which was the son of God. You see that? So the what? The sons of God. Children of God. That we cover the physical blood, bloodline of on this earth. You see that? Children of God. That's what we're talking about. The sons of God leading and the daughters of men. Not talking about no angels who come from heaven and sleep with nobody. You need to pay attention. You're being simple as hell. You see that? Go to um, Hebrews 2 and verse 7 to 9. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7 to 9. Hebrews 2 and 7. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, 
Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and they did set him over the works of thy hand. So Paul is saying, the most I make Yahushua a little lower than the angels, to come down to be able to walk with us, to see what we're going through, to, to be able to show us the path. Keep them laws, keep them commandments, repent, come back. That's the way you get out. That we talking, we have to make him a little lower than angels. That's what so who is the sons of God? They were made a little lower than angels from Adam. Come right down. You need to understand. These that's the sons of God. See so no angels come down and sleep with nobody. Thou made it seem the children of God are a little lower than angels. I have said ye are gods. That's what the most I telling you. A little lower than angels. They're not the children of the princes of this world. They're not the children of Satan. You're above them. <laughs> you see that? But through you sinning and cursing me, that's why I had to cast them and put them to rule over you. Thou made us him a little lower than the angel, Yahushua. Thou crowned us him with glory and honor, and they did set him over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Yahushua, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. That's the reason. He had to come and walk like we walk to debate, okay, die and go back. That's what we're talking about. Go back to his God, his status. Back to his angelic status. Made him a what? A little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. That's why I became the Lamb of God. You see that? I sacrificed my life to get the children of Israel out. You see that? To be able to what? reconcile them to the Mosai. That's what, that's what it's about. You were sons of God. He became, he come down here as a son of God. You see that? A little lower than the angels. Who we are? The children of Israel. We are the sons of God. A little lower than angels. That's what it's talking about. Go back to Job 1 and verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God, we have just went through the scripture and show who the sons of God are, made little the Lord and angels from Adam and his progeny, the children of God. Linnaeus, come right down to the children of Israel. You need to understand, not the children of Satan or the prince of this world. It's two different things happening in this book. <laughs> you need to understand. You need to pay attention. Um, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, they had to give account, and Satan came also among them. So Satan was there along, come, come to give account to. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Conversation between you, the Lord and Satan, the Mosai. Whence comest thou? He said, Where you come from? He said, What? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, I'm from going to and fro in the earth. And from walking up and down in it, I do my job. I go in and what? Put, put traps and snares in the behind to cause them to what? Sin? To curse you? <laughs> so you're going to punish them? You, you're giving me the green light to put them to death? I do my job. He's on assignment. The most I say, I want to see if you obey me or obey him. That's what we're talking about. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? The most I say, did he consider Job? I know he's perfect and he upright and he's keeping the law, but did he try him? That's what the most I say. Did you try him? You need to pay attention. Did he teach, did, did, did teach you? The devil tempt Job. And the devil, the devil afflict the devil afflict Job. That's what they teach us growing up in, 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 in Sunday school and all that garbage. You see that when I read the book and I say, Well, that's not what it's saying. The most I had a conversation with the devil and say, Did you consider him? Did you try him? To see if he can hold the mantle. You see that? If he's gonna endure to the end, keep them lost to the end and the end. So the most I is gonna that what Elihu is telling him. You better endure. Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm the messenger of God. You see that? Stop being prideful, stop exalting yourself. That we do that's that Elihu tell him. Humble. You stop to place yourself above the most high. The most high will do what you want to do. You have no respect a person. Don't worry about his ways and not your ways. That's all he, he, he was telling him in chapter 32 and 33. Back to Job 1 and 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. He hated evil. He said he perfect. He keeping them laws. But did you try him? <laughs> That's what the most I said. Did you try him? Prove him. In other words, go and prove him. We find him. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, the job fairly for not so the devil know he say what? I know he keeping them laws. He say what? He he have no no chink in the armor. So why are you telling me to try him? You don't, you, you have him protected. That's one of the anointed ones. The devil tell him, You protecting him, I know you have you, you protecting him. Has done has not thou made an hedge about him? He's protected, I can't go, I try going on him, but I can't get him. <laughs> you see that? The devil knows. Has thou not made a hedge about him and about his house? He didn't give him protecting any children and about all that he had on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. So he said, what? You, the devil telling him, Moses, I, you protecting him. I can get to him. You have blessed his substance and increased in the land. You, you, you're protecting him. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he had. And he will curse you to thy face. So the devil said, what? If you let me, let me get him, I bet he's going to curse you. You're going to miss a sin. So the, the, the most I say, what? And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he had is in thy power. Moses said, go and try him. <laughs> Move the head from him. Go and try him. That's what he tell him. You need to understand. Most I say, I have no respect of I'm going to try you. 
What are we going through now? Trials and tribulations, yes. I'm going to try you behind. Just endure it. Otherwise, I say, gold is refined. You see that? In the fire. An acceptable man in the fullness of adversity. That's the most I say. I'm going to try you. I'm going to try you behind. You need to pay attention. So act two and one. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright. Get your mind right. And constantly endure. And make that haste in time of trouble. You see that when the devil come and, and trying you behind and tempting you and afflicting you, don't run. Don't run. Don't curse God and die. You see that? Don't run. Cleave unto him. Keep them commandments. And depart not away. Stay in keeping them laws. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. I am going to reward you with immortality of the kingdom. I have to purge you sins. Purge your sin and try you. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. He affliction. He said, afflict Job. I gave him sores. I put him on the bed. He get bed sores. He can't eat. He get maga. You see what? Take it cheerfully. Enjoy it. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. When I bring you from what? You're living it up. You were living deliciously. You see that? And Moses said, I drop you. You see that? Some of you had big houses, some of you had big high-profile high jobs, you see that? And then boom, you lost your job, lost your house, lost it, your family, lost everything. <laughs> Moses said, what? Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it. There's a reason behind it because I'm dealing with you. It's all about you. The kingdom of heaven is for you. It's about you. Let me see what you're going to do. You're going to curse me and die? And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Moses said, I'm going to take your job, I'm going to take your house, I'm going to take your family, I'm going to take everything for me. What are you going to do? You see that? Be patient. Enjoy it. When <laughs> you I bring you from the top of the world and I drop I bring you base. The most I say, enjoy it. You see that? Be patient. For gold, you are the gold. The kingdom of heaven is for you. Immortality for you. You are the gods. That way you must I say. You are coming back to me. I refine in you. For gold is tried in the fire. The devil I'm gonna send you see what? Don't say it and say the job. You take the head from him. <laughs> and I go prove, I'm gonna make him curse you. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he had, and he will curse this life is. Let me get him. Let me let me take his job. Let me take his house. Let me take his children. That's what the devil says. He's going to curse you behind. Meaning we'll go back in the midst of sin. But go back to Sirach 2 and 5. For gold is tried in the fire. Just as Job is a parable, is tried in the fire. The devil do what? Kill all the children. You see that? An acceptable man in the fullness of adversity. Acceptable men, men who are going to get the kingdom. Who was with the Mosai from the beginning? I'm going to put you to the adversity of who? The devil that we're talking about. I'm going to make him try it. Believe in him, in the Mosai, and he will help thee. Keep and joke. Keep them commandments to the end. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Keep them laws, statutes, commandments to the end. You see that? Moses say, trust in me. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside, lest you fall. Do not turn back. That we saying, don't curse God and die. In other words, don't go back in the midst of sin. Because what sin is what? Cursing God, according to Job 1 and verse 5. You see that? It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their minds. In their minds. You see that? Don't go back in the sin because you could sin the most you're going to destroy it. Now we tell you, we just endure it. Go back to Job 1 and verse 11. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he had, the devil saying to the most high, and he will curse thee to, the, to thy face. Let me give him a flicky behind. <laughs> Let me give him some hard times, times he never know about ever in life. And what? He's going to curse you, go walk in the midst of sin and be that, be that murderer, he's going to be that drug dealer, he's going to start selling drugs again. You see that? He's going to be that thief again. He's going right back into the wicked ways, the comfort zone. Because he lost faith, he's going to lose faith. Verse, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he had is in thy power. The most I say, go and try him. Go and try him. But only what? Only upon himself. Put not forth thine hand. Don't kill him. That's what he said. You don't have authority to kill him. That's all he telling him. You don't have authority to take your life. But take everything you have. Take your house. Take your job. Take your family. Take your children. Take everything from him. But what? Don't put him to death. That's what the most I say. So who? Oh, but Psalm 68 and 20. Because that song strange to a lot of people. That the most I say what? Only don't kill him. Go to Psalm 68 and verse 20. Because why is the Most High saying that? Psalm 16 and 20. He that is our God is the God of salvation, and unto the God the Lord belong the issues from death. I decree who live and who die. That's what he's saying. Go try him, go afflict him, but don't put your hand on him. <laughs> don't, because I have to get a decree. That's what the Most High says. So who, who, who kills? The Most High have to give the decree. 
put not thy for thine hand, back to Job 1 and 12, put not for thine hand, don't touch him. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. You see that? And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking. They were what? Eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's son. What is that going into? Go to Matthew 24 verse 38. His sons and his daughters were what? Eating and drinking. Eating and drinking. Matthew 24 verse 38. Verse 38. For as in the days of Noah, which is Noah, as, sorry, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. You see, that's so what they were having a time. The children of Israel having a what? A time. Having, a, having fun. <laughs> Go to Luke 17, verse 26. Luke 17, 26. Because the, children, the sons of Job were doing what? Eating and drinking. Luke 17, 26. As in the days of Noah, Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Just as how I come and destroy them in the flood, Moses said, coming unknown to them and bring destruction, death and destruction. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. So that was your choice in here. The same way that that destruction coming on Noah is the same way when I come back. I want to bring death and destruction because they're having what? They're eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. They're having a time, and they don't want to keep my laws. They're distracted. And we say, so shall it, even so shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In the, in the, Moses said, the same way I will catch you behind, off, off guard, not keeping them laws, statutes, commandments. You see that? You need to pay attention. Um, go to 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 7. 1 Corinthians 10 and 7. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 7. Neither be ye idolaters as some of them, as some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. You see that? You see that the, the, the idolatry is talking about in the midst of idolatry. You're going after other gods. You're celebrating birthday, having fat, fat after fat. Most I say, having a time. You're doing sin, sin upon sin upon sin. Don't get caught. Don't get caught with the Exodus 32 and 6. Don't get caught off guard. That's all he's telling you. Don't get caught. Keep them commandments. Exodus 32 verse 6. They rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. That's all it's talking about. The children of Israel having a time. They're having a party. A big, big fun party. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse... Deuteronomy 20. I'm reading from verse 1. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. So I say, don't have no fear. Why? Jump to verse... Verse 5. And the officer shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that had built a new house and had not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man dedicated it. Save it, property. Go back if you because your mind will be distracted. That's all he said. And when the man what and what man is he that planted a vineyard and had not eaten of it? Let him also go and return unto his vineyard, lest he die in the battle, and another man eat it. And what man is there that, that betrothed a wife? Had not taken her, let him go back. So he's talking about what the eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage and and, and, and and marrying and giving in marriage. That we're talking about. They're going to be fearful and faint hearted. Back to Job 1 and verse 13 again. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking, wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the what? And the Sabians. The Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea. And they have slain the servants. They have done what? Kill the servants. They slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. You see what? Is the, does the messenger come and say what? I alone escaped to, uh, escape to tell thee. Go to First Kings chapter 9 and verse 10. First Kings chapter 9 and verse 10. He said, I alone escaped. <laughs> what is this talking about? It's a messenger, right? Yeah. The, you just read in um, Eli. He was who? The messenger. Instead of God, you pay attention. First Kings chapter 9. Sorry, 19 and verse 10. 1 Kings 19 and 10. 19 and 10. 1 Kings chapter 9. And I, it's, this is the limit I'm Elijah. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, and thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. See that? So Elijah. <laughs> this is Elijah we're talking. When you go to um, chapter 18 and 17. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah. You see that? That Elijah, Ahab said unto him, Are thou he that troubled Israel? Are you the messenger? Are you the man instead of God? Now we're talking about you. Come to deliver God's message. Go back to Job 1 
and verse 16, 15, and he said, and I only am escaped alone to tell you, because they killed, they take the, the, the slay the I'm sorry, they have slain the servants, with the edge of the sword, verse 16. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the fire of God is fallen from heaven, and had burnt up the sheep. It did what? Burnt up the sheep. You see, you see that? Who is the sheep you're talking about? Go to Matthew 15, 24. <laughs> Go to Matthew 15, 24. It had burnt up the sheep. Matthew 15, 24. The fire of God came, and you're going to understand. Yahushua. But he answered and said, I am not sent. I didn't come from the heaven for who? But only for, for the lost sheep, of his, lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yahushua said, I only come for the children of Israel. You see that? The lost sheep, the children of Israel who don't know who they are, who scattered. He said, I, I am not sent. I only came for them. Because what? You see what? Go to Jeremiah 50 and verse 4 to 7. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 4 to 7. Jeremiah 50 and 4. In those days and in that time, said the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah, northern kingdom, southern kingdom, together, going and weeping, and they shall go and seek the Lord their God. They're going to repent and return to my laws. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces to Tidda. Tidda what? Saying, Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant. He said, Let me repent and keep them laws that his commandment. Perpetually for an everlasting covenant. That shall not be forgotten. Means that they're going to plan the laws in their mind and they're not going to turn them back. My people had been lost sheep. Who? The children of Judah and the children of Israel. That's who God's people are. My people had been what? Lost sheep. You should say what? I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The children of Judah and the children of Israel. It's a New Testament and a New Covenant and a, and a New Doctrine and the New Testament is a Christian doctrine. He's speaking garbage. You don't know what he's talking about. You see that? You're, giving, you're philosophizing and adding to the Mosai words and subtracting. Be mindful. Repent and keep it moving. Mosai say, I am, the, the, the New Testament is the parables of the Old Testament. You need to pay attention. It's deep beyond your comprehension. If you're not keeping the law, you will not get it. My people have been lost sheep. The, the children of Israel, Yahushua say what? Matthew 15, 24, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who is it? Verse, verse 4, the children of Israel and the children of, children of Judah. This, they are what? My people have been lost sheep, the same children of Israel and children of Judah. Northern kingdom, southern kingdom. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. False prophets, you see that? Teaching them erroneous doctrines have caused them to what? Go in the midst of sin. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to from rulership to captivity. You see that? From gods to, to, to slaves. You need to understand. From the palace to the neighborhood, to the hood. <laughs> You're talking about. From the palace to the hood. They have forgotten their resting place, the Most High. You see that? By transgressing the law or sinning according to Job 1 and 5, you cursing the Most High God. That we see, you forget your resting place, you cursing me. All that found them have devoured them because you cursing me, you've sinned, Mr. Sin. And the adversary said, We offend not because they have sinned or cursed against the Lord their God. They have cursed their God. We do nothing. <laughs> the enemy say, What? We do nothing. Because the Most High delivered them in your hand. You need to pay attention. The habitation of justice, they curse the Most High God by sinning. You need to pay attention. Even the Lord, the hope of their fathers, need to understand. Need to just being simple. Go back to Job 1 and verse 17. 16. While they were there speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven. The judgment of God, I won't bring judgment on them if they don't want to keep my Lord, they curse me out and sinning. And what? And had burned up the sheep. The children of Israel get scattered. You see that you take them out, take them out from Jerusalem, suck them from 70 80 under now, scatter them behind. And the servants, what? And consume them. So they, they, they scattered what? They burn up the sheep and the servants. Go to Leviticus 25 55. Who's these servants? Leviticus chapter 25, verse 55. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You see that? I, I, I cast out the children of Israel. For violating my law, for sinning against me and cursing me. You see that those that's what the Mosai is talking about. Go back to the book of Job, chapter 1, and verse 17. The fire of God is fallen from heaven and had burned up the sheep and the servants, the children of Israel, and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell you, the messenger of God. Elijah was who? The messenger of God. Elihu was who? The messenger of God. You see that? Is it I Job or this? Okay, so sh sh shut it down now. Listen to what God says. Elijah come and tell you yeah, what? Okay, shut it down now. Listen to what God says. You need to pay attention. That's what it is. You see what? I alone remain. I alone escape. Because I'm the messenger of God. The man of God. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. 
and I will him escape alone to tell thee alone. You see, go to Psalm 17 and 13. He slain the servants with the edge of the sword. Who is this? Arise, O Lord, disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. The wicked of the earth is thy sword. That's what they say, what? We just read in Jeremiah 50. They say, we will offend not, because they have sinned against their God. The sword of the Lord is the wicked of the earth. The most I will use that to punish you when you curse him up and all. And I was in the midst of sin, violating his laws. From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world which have their portion in this life. You see that children of this earth, the princes of this earth, children of Satan. I'm going to punish you behind with them. I mean to pay attention. Go back to Job 1 and verse 17. You see what? And I am, and I, only I am escaped. I <laughs> don't to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came on also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. You see, they were having a time. Not keeping the laws of the Most High God, but in the midst of sin. Cursing God. You see that? Having the time. In the midst of sin. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escape alone to tell you. The children of Israel. It's a parable talking about the children of Israel in the midst of sin. And the Most High is flicking me behind. I'm punishing it. Captivity to captivity. Captivity to captivity. That's all it's talking about. You see that? And who escaped? The man of God, the messenger of God, you see that they were talking about it. All these different ca captivities, I only am left. You see that one, what? The first one say what? And the, they have slain, verse 15, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. And yet they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped to tell you, the remnant. You see that escape. You need to pay attention. And the, the different scenarios. While he was just speaking, there came also another, and they said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and had burnt up the sheep and the servants, had burned Jerusalem, suck it, destroy them. And I will name escape. You see that? The remnant will escape. You need to pay attention. See, third verse 17. And he, while he was yet speaking, he came also another and said, The Chaldeans made off with three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away and slain the servants to the edge of the sword. And I only am escape alone to tell you. You see that? The captivity, the captivity, the captivity. And the elect or the remnant will escape. The man of God. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and it said, Thy sons and thy daughters and were eating and drinking and wine in the eldest brother's house. You see that there's four captivities it went to here. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head. Job, Job did what? He arose and tell you, rent his mantle and shaved his head. And do what? Job did what? Job shaved his head. Job shaved his head. Let me go look at the definition of the word. Um, let me read something for you first. Leviticus, go to Leviticus 21 and verse 5. Job shaved his head. Leviticus 21, verse 5. Let's see what the law regards to shaving head. He make he make he, he, he clean his head. <laughs> Let's see what he's talking about. Leviticus 21 and 5. Thou shalt not make baldness upon thy head. You see that? Neither shalt thou shave off the corner of their bed. That's supposed to mean. The law says you shall not make baldness of your head. So now I'm talking about that. Is it? The definition of that word shave, according to Miriam Webster's. Having the hair cut close to the skin. Miriam Webster's. Having the hair cut what? Close to the skin. He's, 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 he's a ball. <laughs> he's not talking about bald head. He's not bald. Neither what? Thou shalt not shave off the corner of thy beard, nor make any cuttings in thy flesh. You see that? So neither make any cuttings. Cutting. They shall not make baldness upon the head. Let's look at the definition of the word baldness. Because it's saying shave baldness. Because shave say cutting close to the, sh the, 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 the flesh. Baldness. Let's see what the definition of it is. Bald. Clean shave. Do you see that? It's clean shaven. So that's talking about what? That, that's shiny. That shiny, shiny head. That's what we're talking about baldness. And shave off. When he says shave, it means cutting low. Cut low. So that's what he did. He cut his hair low. Because he was in mourning. Go back to Job 1 and 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle. And shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. You see that? So he went down and into mourning. Mourning for the, for the children. And he said, Naked came out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return. You see what? They, they take them, naked I come, naked I go. And the Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. He said, the, more, the most I bless me them, the most I take them. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. I ain't cursing the Mosai to hell with that. You know, that's what he wanted to do, curse the Mosai. In all this, Job said not, nor charge God foolishly. Because he said, What? I was blameless. I kept the law. I'm going to keep them law to the end. Because the Mosai said, I'm going to flick you. I'm going to take your house. I'm going to take a train. I'm going to take a job. I'm going to... What are you going to do? Gold has been what? Tried in the furnace of adversity. That way, that's what it's around um, two. And one through five, six, seven. So gold is trying to furnace. I'm going to try you. You see, that's when you've been brought to a low estate, injure. Injure it. Go to Job chapter 2 and verse 1. In all this, Job sin not. Because what is sin? for John 3 and 4. Sin is a transgression of the law. Job will break the law. Job said, I'm breaking the law. Go back, go back to verse 21. Job 1 and 21. And Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return to her. You see what? Naked I come, naked I go. Go to Ecclesiastes 5 and read in verse 1. Ecclesiastes 5. Ecclesiastes 5, I read in 1 now. Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest in the house of the Lord, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. So that's Solomon saying, shh, when they come into the church of God. Shh. These are the, the domains, yap, 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 yap. Be not ready to give the sacrifice of fools. Talk, 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 nonsense and nonsense. You see that when you don't understand. For they consider not that they do evil. They miss a sin when they're over talking. That's what he said. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty. To utter anything before God. Job, does it, Job didn't do what? He didn't charge God foolishly. You see that? In, in all this, Job did not sin. Job 1 and 22. Not charge God foolishly. He hold the peace. You see that? Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thy heart be hasty. To utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. You are man. Therefore let thy words be few. You see that? Okay. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Better it is, verse 5. Better it is that thou shouldest not vow. Than thou shouldest vow and not pay. To make a promise and do pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. You see that? Yes, you, by your way talking, you could, you could cause, bring sin upon yourself by talking, over talking, and saying things you ain't supposed to say. Neither say thou before the angel. Before who? Before the angel that it was an error. You see that? There's, a, there's going to be angels in the way. Verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest in the house of God, in the church of God. There's going to be who? An angel. And you need to pay attention. Let me tell you. Pay attention, that man over the church is the angel. That we talking about. The angel that it was, do say what? I'm going to read it again. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore thou sh should be, go, where, so wherefore, do, wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hand because the angels say everything. That we say, jump to verse 16. And this is also a sore evil that in all points as he came, so shall he go. The, the, the Job said what? Naked I come, naked I go. So he didn't cause God foolishly. So he said be mindful of how much what you're uttering. Your utterances. Your utterances. How much talking you're doing. That's what he's talking about. Just be mindful. Go to um, 1 Timothy 6 and 7. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 7. For he brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. So that was Job said, naked I come, naked I go. The Lord gave, the Lord take. That's it. What does it matter to me? I keep it moving. I keep it moving. Go to um, chapter 2, Job chapter 2 and verse 1. Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. So another day, <laughs> they come again, the sons of God. And we just established who they are. From Adam. Adam and his seed is the children of God. He's talking about, he's talking about no angels. The children of God. Because they were what? Upright men living with the law close to the Most High in them times. You need to understand. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence come thou? We say, Wait, 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 wait about. And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it, I do my thing. Trusting in the children of Israel, laying snares before them to keep them in sin. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou consider my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and eschewed evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. And what? Still. Is the most I say, What? I kill all. Satan said, I kill all the children. And he's still in in in, in Christian man. Go in verse 22, 1 and 22. In all this, Job sin not, nor charge God for this. Thing. So he holy peace. He say, naked I come, naked I go. It is what it is. The Lord give and the Lord take. So the most I say, go and try him again. Go and try him again. Prove him. Prove because gold is being refined. Go try him in the fire of adversity. Back to verse 4. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, and all that a man had will he give for his life. But put for thy hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. He goes sin. He will go in sin. The devil said, He go go in sin. Let me let me go at him again. <laughs> let me give him some more. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Make sure you don't kill him. <laughs> that is it. 
Make sure you don't kill him. You're not authorized to kill him. Because we have a problem. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he's in thine hand. Why is he in thine hand? Go to Luke chapter 4 and verse 4. Go to Luke chapter 4 and verse 4. You need to understand. This is something your pastors are teaching you. Luke chapter 4 and verse 4. And then who shall answer them saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Why? Because when you read from verse 1, And Yahushua, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. The devil was tempting him. You see that? Because he was out there fasting. And in those days he did eat nothing, because he was fasting or praying. And when they were ended, he afterwards hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command the stone that he be made bread. And who shall answer them and saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. You see that Deuteronomy 6 and 3 quoting. 8 and 3, sorry. Man shall not live by bread alone. You see, not physical bread. I, I need more than that. <laughs> you know, you talk more, live by bread only means immortality. Physical food ain't going to give immortality. That's all he's saying. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment time. And the devil said unto him, all this power I will I give thee. The devil said unto the Son of God, I will give you this power. Means what? The most I give me dominion here. That's what he's telling him. And the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. Your daddy gave this to me. You see that? That we could tell them, tell um, Satan, did you consider Job? One try him. You need to understand. This is his domain. He has power here. That's all I want to, <laughs> to establish to show you. If you and to whomsoever I will, I give it. The devil say I will give it. So when you gain your wealth and you get any blessings and your big houses and your man your mansion and your millions, know who you get it from. The both the devil said, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Because it's delivered unto me. This is my domain. Yeah. God bless me, you see. God bless me. I get the next house and I inherit this house and I have three houses you know, and I have cars and I have no who you're getting it from. The <laughs> most I say, pay attention. The devil tells you, Joshua, this delivered unto me and I give it to whom I will. All the glory of it. You need to pay attention. That's what most I say. Lay not up for yourself, treasures upon earth. Christ is saying the same thing. Don't worry about this. You need to pay attention. Don't be simple. Go back to Job chapter 2. Read Job 9 24 first. Job 9 24. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covered the, he covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? We just read it in Luke 4. The devil himself. The, the wicked, the, you see that? He have dominion here. And him as his children. Satan and his children. You need to understand. Children of God, children of the devil. Satan and his, his children. You need to understand. They have dominion on this earth. So don't worry when they have all the wealth and all the nice, nice mansions and the, the millions in the bank. Don't worry about it. That's his children. <laughs> you children of Israel. Keep your laws of your God. He's going to try you and he's going to afflict you. Enjoy it. Don't worry. I want to be like them. She have that I wanted. No. I must say, son, I'm trying you. Because you are the mortals. You are the gods. Go back to Job 1 and verse 7. So when Satan fought from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot until his crown. You see that? I'm going to try him. Gold is being what? Refined. You see that? Acceptable men in the fullness of adversity. That was Sirach 2 and 5 is talking about Gold is trying to fire an acceptable man in the fullness of adversity. He said, well, I kill the churn. He ain't cursed your God. Now I'm going to flick him. I'm going after him hard now. And he smote him with what? Saw boils at the sole of his foot and his crown. That the churn of Israel scattered in what? In transit like the slave trade. You need to understand. Pay attention. I scattered all the behind in the, in, the, in the slave trade. I sent all the naked and ships like sardine. Pay attention. And he took a picture to scrape himself with all and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him. He then said who? His wife. Job wife. Do thou still return, retain thine integrity? You see that? So, the, the, let me show, um, so when Satan from the presence of the Lord and smote Job. Let me just go to something quick. quick. Hebrews chapter 12. Go to Hebrews 12. Let me show you something quick. Satan smote Job. Hebrews chapter 12. I read in verse 1. I'm going to show you something. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So endure. Set aside your what? Your sin, your transgression, and keep them laws. Looking unto Yahushua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Mosai, of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against him. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. So he endured the trials and the tribulation. Yet ye have not resisted, sorry, you have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the trusting of the Lord. Did, did you see that? Don't hear that when you're going through it. When the most I take your job, take your family, 
you lose your house, you lose your money, you lose everything you have. You see that? You get sick. Don't sit close to God and say, God, what about keeping the laws? Why is the Lord doing this to me? The most I say, I'm trying it, I'm refining that job. That's the train of Israel. That's what I'm doing to the train of Israel in the diaspora now. I'm refining them. Cool, they're the royals, they're the gods in the suit. They're to come back and shut this down. Most I said, I'll put it through it, I'll prove it. Prove it. Nobody's walking in the kingdom. Why? No faint when thou art rebuked of him. The most I'm going to rebuke you or trusting you behind. You're going to put it to trials, I'm going to put it to things. So if you're so long having a nice multi million dollar mansion and nothing happening to you, you need to pay attention and pray to the Lord that He turn His spirit, or you're just not a child of the devil. You need to pay attention. Keep the laws. Come back and keep our laws. For whom the Lord loveth, He chasteneth. If you're a child of God or you're an elect of God or you were from the beginning, He's going to chasten you behind. He's going to try you. That's what He's telling you. I will try you. Give you some hard times. I will try you. That midnight, midnight job that you hate, you see, I love me better. I can't, I can't stay up in the night. That is, you give you a midnight job. You see, that I'm going to try you behind. I will try it. You see, we're going to curse man die. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Who's going to be an immortal? Who's going to come back to me? Who was with me from the beginning? I will have to try it like the Job is a parable. I have to try you, children of Israel, scattering the diaspora. We'll try it. If you enjoy chastening, if you take it, God dealeth with you as with sons. He's dealing with you, your most high. The most high, we saying, gold is being tried in the fire, refining you for what? Royalty. To come and rule this in, rule this earth. You need to understand. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers. All the children of God will be partakers of the chastening or the correction of God. That we tell the word. Wherefore all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. So if nothing happened to you, you see that I have the multi-million dollar mansion, and I have another house here, and another mansion, and another mansion, and I have the millions, and I have the, the fleet of cars in my driveway, and nothing happening to you. The most I say what? If you be without chastisement, then are you bastards and not sons? You're not a child of God. You need to pay attention. You're not of the elect. That's what we're telling you. Then are you bastards and not sons? Nothing happening to you. You live in the perfect life. Furthermore, we have the most I will refine you and try you. Furthermore, we are good, good Job sick. All that Job had cursed God foolishly. He didn't curse God. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which have corrected us and we gave them reverence. We the earthly father. Shall we not more rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? The most high. You see what? You ain't rather the most high chasten you. You better take it. For they verily, for a few days, trust not after their own pleasure. But he, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. And this is always most I say, he's trusting you or correcting you to bring you back to immortals. To make it shed this sin, this sinful flesh. To make you leave these things. Stop thinking about the things of this world, the lusting after things, earthly things, idolatry. Now, no trusting for the present seemeth to be joyous. Nothing new. Who, who, who want to be the, the going through hard times? Like we be going through hard times somewhat. 70, 80 till now. <laughs> the most I say. We go into it from now, nobody like it. Now, no trusting for the present seem to be joyous. Nobody wants to be the bottom of society. That's not joyous, but grievous. It is grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Because the most I say, I come to shut down the civil kingdom to make what? They take the beggars from the dunghill and set them in palaces. You going back into royalty. You going back to be kings, to be rulers on this earth. That we tell you. <laughs> that we enjoy it. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths. Keep them laws. Repent and come back to them laws. That is the Keep them laws. Make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way and let it be rather be healed. So what the lame means what? The ones who are not going to repent. The ones who are not who will enjoy it. This is my life. I'm living up the life and boasting about the basketball court in the backyard and the pool in the middle of the house. Now we're saying what? Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. You're lame. You don't want to keep the laws of God. You see that? That's your God. Your, 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 the, the wealth, the money, the acquisition, the power you think you have. <laughs> That's your God. That we see what? You're lame. You're going to be turned out of the way. Because you can't keep them laws. You're not going to give them thing up. Thing. But, let, but let it rather be healed. Repent and keep the laws of God. Because you, don't, you, you, you continue to violate the Sabbath. To prolong my sports career. To prolong my music career. To prolong my acting career. You see, I'm an actress. I'm an actor. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sports superstar. And you have to violate the most I Sabbath every day. You so you can't keep it. You, you're lame. You're going to get cast out of the way. You see that? But let it rather be healed. You need to pay attention. Pay attention. Go to um, Job chapter 2 and read verse 8. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes. That we see in what? He take and he scrape, he scrape, he potsherd and sat down on ashes. 
Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? So his wife said to him, What? Do you still maintain integrity? Means what? You still keeping them laws? You still being perfect? He killed all the children. He gave boys, boys and salt. That's, that's what the, them women go do in the ears. You turn up Israel. You see that? That's what they, they're going to do in the ears. The wives, you see what? They're going to come in the ears and, and seduce you and tie you to sin. Did I just make that up? Pay attention. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you a deep mystery. She said what? Curse God and die. That's his wife. She said what? Curse God and die. Let me, let's, let's, let's go. Go to Job chapter 1 and verse 5 again. Job 1 and 5 again. And so it was, when the days of their feasting were gone about the children of Job, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings because they were in the midst of sin, according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their minds. That we say, they sinned and cursed God in their mind. So sin or transgressing the law is cursing God. Go back to Job 2 and 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? You, 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 um, I'm a man, I'm perfect. I'm keeping the laws. Curse God and die. She said, go and sin. Curse God and die. Sin is what? They say, sin is cursing God. Job, according to Job 1 and 5. She tell him, go and sin. That's his wife. Who's supposed to be behind him to bail him up? To bind him up? She said, God, curse God and die. Curse him and die. Give it up. Curse him and die. What is Genesis 3? I mean, didn't want this empty. Genesis chapter 3 was one said that his wife said unto him, curse God and die. Pay attention. I'm going to show you something heavy here. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, The devil come to Eve, and say what? Yea, had God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. He said, But God gave all of the commandments, Don't eat of the tree. But the devil turned and said, oh, Yeah, no, God said that, but what? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, God had said, He shall not eat of it. Neither shall he touch it, lest he die. So she, why is he conversing with somebody? What the laws that God gave to she and her husband? Why is she having a conversation with the devil? Out of order, number one. <laughs> the most I say, what? She telling the devil, no, God said, that tree don't eat of it. Don't. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Why is she having a conversation with the, the, the serpent? And she husband is there. He's supposed to say, no, go and talk to my Lord. You see that? Go and talk to my Lord. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. No, don't believe God. Curse God and die. In other words, he's telling she, you shall not surely die. You see that? Curse God and die. For God know that in the day he, he, that he eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You ain't going to die. God knows you. You're not going to die. You see that? You see that? You ain't going to die. Don't worry. You're going to be gods, knowing good and evil. See, do you see that behind? What, is, what, is, what happened here? Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she listened to him and she believed him. What did Job wife just say? Curse God and die. You see that? Why are you keeping them laws? What did the devil just tell she? Tell Eve, why are you keeping them laws? Don't listen to God. Violate, curse him and die. Curse him. Curse him. You see that? And what he tells you, in other words, he deceives her and tells her, you're going to live. If you curse him. If you eat it, you're going to be as God. In other words, he said you have to get put to death. It's the same thing. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for fruit, she did. She, she obeyed the devil. She violated God's law. She cursed God. She went into sin. You see that? And when the woman saw that, the only difference, she didn't say curse him and die like, like the wife said, curse him and die straight up. He said, curse, curse him, and you're going to be God. The same thing, you get put to death. He knows you're going to get put to death. And when the woman, that's his job. Go to and fro in the earth, you see that? From walking up and down in it. <laughs> to, to, to trick the behind and to, to see if we can follow the Lord, if we will obey you or obey me. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for fruit and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she saw, she took, because she did too what? She cursed God. God, God gave the law to Adam and Adam gave it to her. You see that? So she cursed God. She did what? She desired, she desired to make her wise. She took up the fruit. She cursed God. And did eat and gave water to her husband with her and he did it. So she put him to death. She but she cursed God and she made him curse God too. You need to understand. Then continue reading. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked in the midst of sin. And they threw fig leaf together and made themselves apron. You see that? They went in the midst of sin and so they cursed God. According to Job 1 and 5. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking, and who caused them? Eve, Eve, Eve. That's as Job's wife said. Curse God and die. She, she, she's going she to put, want to put Job to death. The same way. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Adam, where are you? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. And in the midst of sin, nakedness is sin. And he said, Who told thee that I was naked? 
Has thou eaten of the tree wherever I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Go back to Job 2 and verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? You want to keep the laws and be perfect? Curse God and die. The woman whom thou gavest unto me. You see that? She tried to tell him the same thing. Tell him, kill. The same way. Just as about that uh, Eve get Adam crippled. You see that? To fall. Spiritually dead. Because he was from the Lord, just slightly lower than an angel, and he started falling. That's, that's why we end up falling, falling, falling. Right up to the condition we're in right now. You need to understand. That devil going to come through what? He come through that spirit. He come through the woman, the weaker vessel. You need to pay attention. And he said what? And the man said, back to Genesis 3 and 12, and the man said, The woman which thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and, and did it, she cursed God, and, she, and, and you see that? And she tricked me. But Job didn't listen to his wife, Adam listened to his wife. That's all it's talking about. Whatever she participated in, she teach him. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. You see what? She said, The devil beguiled me, and I did it. So what did the serpent do with Jubuka Job? From going to and fro in the earth. You see that? Both, you see what? Verse Job 2 and 5. But put forth thy hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to the, to the face. That was the devil telling Mosai. <laughs> you see that? And the Lord God said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Go and try him, but don't kill him. What happened here in Genesis 3? And the man said, The woman which thou givest to be with me, 3 and 12, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. You see that? And the, 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 the devil, you see that? Get him. Get him. But Mosai said, Let's don't kill him. <laughs> Get him to Eve. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. That's his job. Going to and fro in the earth to deceive you behind. The Gippian sent the guy killed. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou hast cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. You see that? Because the devil has a seed on the earth. Children of God, he has a seed because of what he did with Eve. And, and her seed, the children of Adam, true set. You see that? True set, true set. The children of the devil is true Cain. You need, to, you need to understand it because of the union between him and Eve. You need to pay attention. It's children of God, children of the devil. Between her seed and thy seed, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. You see that? And thy desire shall be to thy husband, not to the devil. <laughs> your desire should not be to the devil. You see that? But your desire shall be to what? Thy husband. She caused the sin. And he shall rule over thee, not the devil ruling over you. Your husband will rule. I'm making it explicitly plain to you now. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because you listened to your wife. That we said. And has and what? And has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. I commanded you, don't touch that. You listen to your who? Your wife. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. What I'm establishing here is the most I say unto Adam, because thou hast hearkened and listened to the voice of thy wife. Go back to Job 2 and verse 9. What does Job's wife say? Then said his wife unto him, thou, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. You see that? The devil come through who? His wife. To take him out. You need to pay attention. Eve get, Adam get catch through Eve. Job say, hell no. You see that? He's going to come. That's his job. Why I went there? Let's go and search something. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse... 1 Corinthians 11. Let me show you something. Now we're going to see, but the talk about New Testament is Christian book. And New Testament is Christianity. And New Covenant is the same. This thing is a deep parable explaining everything in the Old Testament. You see that it's beyond your understanding. If you're not keeping the laws, it's beyond your understanding. 1 Corinthians... Chapter 11, I read from verse 1. Be you followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Let Paul say, follow me as I follow Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things. And keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. Keep them laws as I deliver them to you. Because it's deep mysteries. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The, 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 the head of the man is Yahushua. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. This is order. He said, set the order. this is the hierarchy. Christ over the man. The man over the woman. And the head of Christ is God. God over Christ, Christ over the man, the man over the woman. Why is he saying that? Every man praying a prophesy and having his head covered. This one what he said. So if you're having these things tie up on your head and what and you're praying, the most I say in violation. But every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered, this one with her head. This one with who? Her head. Who's her head? The man. You need to verse three. The head of the woman is the man. You need to understand what we're talking about. If she don't cover she head, she dishonor the man. Why? For that is even all one as if she was shaved, as if she had bald head. That we're talking about. 
For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shown. It's like shave she had, in other words. It's like a shame. If she don't want to put on a head covering. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shown or shaven, let her be covered to cover her head. For in, a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. The man, the children, you Israelite men, are the image of glory of the Most High. You need to pay attention. This is not simple. You are gods, but you shall die like men in the midst of sin. For cursing me. That one of Moses said, punishing me behind. But the woman is the glory of the man. She is what? The glory of the man. So if you are the glory of the Most High God, you see that? And she's the glory of you. You see that? These are hierarchies. Order, order, order. She's under you. She should be the, don't listen to that. That we're telling you. If she's teaching, giving you advice to violate God's laws, he say, be careful. Why? Why is he saying that? For the man is not of the woman. There's a reason behind it. What happened to Eve and Adam? The devil come to who? Get to Eve and to take him out. What happened to Job and his wife? Curse God and die. The devil go to the wife to try to take him out. Paul is saying what? For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. She's made from you. You see that? You have to have power over she. There's a reason why. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for, for the man. You wasn't created for her to be sub subject, subservient to her, or to be submissive to her, but she was created to be submissive to you. He's not talking about bullying nobody, he's not taking advantage of nobody. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about a spiritual order. Why? For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head. Because of the angels. Because of what? The angels. That man over her is an angel. You need an angel. You need to pay attention. <laughs> you need to pay attention. You are gods, but you shall die like men. You're made little less than angels. You need to pay attention. That's the Bible, yes. The pastor never read that there. He never read this there. That's why he's saying that. Pay attention. Go to um, Ecclesiastes, read chapter 5 and 1 to 6. Ecclesiastes 5, 1 to 6. Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of food. That what Paul is saying. Sorry, I'm King Solomon saying. Shh, when they go to the house of God and be more ready to what? Hear than to give the sacrifice of food. Talk, 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 talk. See that? Be not rushed with thy mouth and let, that, let thine heart be hasty. Let not thine heart be hasty in mind to utter things before God. To talk, talk, talk. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. Keep your words as few as possible. By for a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of his words. A talker, a talker, a talker, a talker. You're going to know he's a fool. Just watch him. That we're talking about. Be talk too much. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Because to do too much talking, you can go in the midst of sin. Neither say, but, ne neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. You see that, that we're telling that woman, that man over that woman is an angel. You need to pay attention. Just pay attention. That we tell. Where is this going? Let's keep reading. Go to Malachi 2 and 7. Malachi 2 and 7. Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. Malachi 2 and 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the Lord his mouth, for he's the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So when you say keep your foot when you go to the house of God, who is in the house of God? The priest, the messenger. You see that? That teacher over you, or that prophet over you, that we say keep your foot, when, because he's what? An angel over the, 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 the church. You just read it in um, Ecclesiastes 5 and 6? Yes. Say thou, say thou not before the angel that it was an error. That we say, keep your foot, keep your foot. For the priest's lips, that priest or that pastor, that prophet over that church, you see that? Should keep knowledge and they should seek the Lord his mouth. He's going to be the, teaching the laws of God. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. And you see that? Who's a messenger? You need to pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. He's a messenger of the Lord of hosts. He's the mouthpiece instead of God. That was that, 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 telling Job, I am instead of God. Job, um, um, the most I tell Moses, I make Aaron the prophet, your mouthpiece, and you, instead of you, and you be instead of me to him. You me instead of God to him. Instead of God. You need to pay attention. Go to um, 1 Timothy 2, I'm reading 8 to 15. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8 through 15. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands, with ra without wrath and doubting. So you're lifting up what? Your holy hands. This will pray. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, just modestly, with shamefacedness and sobriety. So the women are supposed to be shamefaced. We're going to understand why I went here. Because of what? Job wife, because of Eve. We need to pay attention. And not with broided hair. It's just talking about with extravagance. Or gold or poles, of course. We're not saying they can't look nice. It's talking about extravagance. 
but which become a woman professing godliness with good works, modesty, that's all he's talking about. Not loud. Let the woman learn in, in silence with all subjection. What he's saying? Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. What he say? Keep your foot when you go in the house of the Lord. You need to pay attention. Cover your head because of the power that be the angels, the head over you. You need to pay attention. So in the New Testament, it's Christian book, it's teaching to break the laws. Lies, lies, blasphemies, and lies. They don't have a clue what they're talking about. But I suffer not a woman to teach. All you women in past in pulpits and seeing all these false institutions teaching men. The, the, the most High God says, come out, get down from them pulpits. You see that? I suffer not a woman to teach. Nor to what? A soap authority over the man. But to be in silence. You see that? Because of what? Eve, what Eve did to Adam. You see that? What, what? Joe, wife, curse God and die? The most I say, no, 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 no. That's an angel over you. You need to understand. You have to get in your order. Get in your order. That's all he's telling you. Get in your order. It's order. <laughs> this is, these pastors can't teach you this thing because they're not men of God. They're not messengers of God. They're not sent from God. They're false prophets. They're devils. Not, not, I suffer not a woman to teach, not a super authority over the man, but to be in silence. That's what we're talking about. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And, but, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The devil deceived her, so she was in the transgression. What, did, do, what happened to Job wife? The devil deceived her, she said, Cause God, cause, cause God and died. You need to understand. The Job was strong, Job said, The hell with you. That we're talking about. You need to pay attention. Go back to um, Job 2 and verse. 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of those foolish women speaker. He said, What? You see, you see, silly yourself. You see that? You silly. What? Shall we receive God at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? He said, But I was living a nice, nice life. So what? If you take it away. In all this, Job did not Job sin with his lips. Job said, To hell with you. <laughs> I will keep them laws I go in Job. Now, when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Eliphaz the Timonite and Bilad the Shuite and Zophar the Namathite. For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept. They couldn't recognize him. He was in born, in boys. No, that's why they can't recognize the children of Israel in the diaspora. Look at me. God to the ghettos. God to the hoods. Princes and kings to what? To, 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 to clean and poop on the earth. You see that? You need to understand. The most that they don't recognize me. Look at them. You are the gods with your pants halfway down your butt. That we're talking about, you children of Israel. Murdering each other, selling drugs to each other, raping, robbery, theft, lies, deceit, craftiness. Moses said, look at them. They recognize him not. We don't need to Moses say, I don't recognize my children. Look at them. That's why I had to come and get them. I had to plant my laws in the spirit and just take them out. He said, I can't wait for them to come back. I had to take them out and shut this place down. And when they had lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they couldn't recognize him. They lifted up their voice and wept. You see that? Gods. From rulership, now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came everyone from his house, from his own place, Eliphaz the Timonite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Nehemathite. For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they didn't recognize Job. You see that? Wow, look what happened to him. That's how the train of his verse scattered in the diaspora. You see that? Look at them. Princes to the ghetto. You see that? Kings to the ghetto, to the slums, with the pants on the butt. You see that? Exposing the behind. You need to pay attention in the midst of sin. You're fallen, you're fallen from your royalty. They what? They wept. They did what? They wept. And they rent, as I said, the angels the seen the children of Israel, the condition in their brethren. You see that? They wept. And, and they rent everyone his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads and towards the heaven. So they went into what? The dust of the children of Israel mourn. You see that? They sprinkled dust upon their head and rent the garments. That we say. So they sat down with him upon the ground. Seven days and seven nights, and none speak a word unto him, because they were mourning with him. They said, you see that? They were mourning with him. For they saw that his grief was very great. So they be a virgin, the angels has come and go, go, go be, be grieving with them. You need to pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. Go to chapter 3 and verse 1. After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. After that Job do what? He cursed his day. What is that talking about? And Job spake and said, let the day perish when I was born. That birthday, all they have, love to have. My birthday, my birthday party, and my birthday celebration. The most I say, Job say, let that day perish when I was born. I curse that day. You need to understand. The night in which it was said, this is a man child conceived. The day when I was born, that's what you're talking about. Yes, the birthday that you're celebrating. Pagan, pagan worship, idolatry. You see that? Idolizing yourself, making yourself a god. You see that? When the most I say, I want to make you a god, keeping my laws. 
not a satanic God. You see that's a false God, a hidden God. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it. You see that them birthdays are the love. You see that? Let not God regard it from above. From neither let it let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. It's not, you need to understand. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it and let it not be joined until the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. You see that? But the birthday or the month of the year is my birthday. Now we're talking about. It's the birthdays you're talking about. Because what the children of Israel, what we, all, the, all the children went to what? Celebrating the birthday each man on the day. And most like put them to death. Do you see that? You have to that. I don't want that but not, not but the birthday. Let that day what? Perish. Perish, perish, perish when I was born. Go to Ecclesiastes 7 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. Let the day perish when I was born. Ecclesiastes 7 and 1. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. You see that? <laughs> he said the day that he die is better than the day of a birth. You need to pay attention. The Job said that they perish. Stop celebrating their birthdays. It's idolatry. You're making yourself gods, pagan gods. Jeremiah 20, 14. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 14. Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. You see that? Stop celebrating them birthdays. <laughs> Stop celebrating them birthdays. You train of Israel, scattered in the diaspora. It's all about you. It's all about you. You see that? Go to Job chapter 34. Go to Job 34, verse 31. Job chapter 34, verse 31 to 37. I read it. Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement and will not offend anymore. So it's a good thing to what? Repent. Say what? I go through it. The most I put me to your flick me behind, I will offend no more. I will confess. I will repent and return to the laws. He says a good thing. That's it's, it's meat. That's good. That which I see not, teach thou me. See that? Eli, you tell him, Job. Repent. Repentance is what most I want from you. Should it be according to thy mind? Should it be what your thoughts, what you think? I will keep my birthday. I will keep violating your laws? No. Should it be according to thy mind? No. He will recompense it. The most I can pay behind back if you do your own will. <laughs> whether thou refuse or whether thou choose. Refuse it. Yourself. You better choose to keep the law or you refuse to keep the law. You see, you go pay in just kind. Or whether, or, or, so whether thou refuse or whether thou choose. And not I. Therefore speak what thou knowest. Let men of understanding tell me, and let, let a wise man hearken unto me. So Eli, you saying if you're wise, you're going to listen to what I'm telling you, the advice I've given you. Job had spoken without knowledge, and his words were without wisdom. In what? He was justifying himself, saying what? I kept the law, I was perfect, I never violated. I didn't listen to my wife. You see what? The came a trend, naked I come, naked I go. The law gave it, he take it. That's what, so he was saying, why me? Why I getting so? Why, get, why is he afflicting my body physically? That we're talking about. Because I kept the law, then because God, I never go sin. So the Eli used to tell him, don't ex ex exalt yourself. That's what he Let's take your punishment. Take it. That's what he telling him. And say what? I will offend no more. That what is a pride. Um, verse 36, My desire is that Job may be tried unto the end because of his answer for wicked men. He, Job, he said, Job will be tried unto the end because of his answers for what? Wicked men. The children that he was sacrificing an animal for. You see that? He must say, what? look. He was out sacrificing for them, so he's making a covering for them. In other words, My desire of Job may be tried unto the end because of his answers for wicked men. For he had added rebellion unto his sin. You see that the children, his children, just as um, as um, <laughs> what's his name? Not Samuel. Uh, let me just touch it briefly. First Samuel. First Samuel. Eli, <laughs> just as Eli, with his sons. So Samuel two and twelve. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial, and they knew not the Lord. They were children of the devil, wicked as hell. Verse 22, now Eli was very old and heard that all that his sons did unto Israel and how they lay with the women and that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. They were homemongering. That we say that Eli didn't go, shut the behind them. That's what he's talking about. Job was just sacrificing the children. That's what he said, the children of Israel. He making an excuse for them. My desire is that Job, back to Job 34 and 36, my desire is, is that Job may be tried until the end because of his answers for the weak, for wicked men. You see that? Because he was sacrificing an animal for them. Just as Eli was, was covering for his sons. That we said, Moses said, didn't bring the iron, no respect a person, bring the judgment. That was the Moses said. Job didn't want, bring the judgment. That we're talking about. For he added rebellion unto, unto his sin and he clapped his hands among us. For he was keeping the law. But this was his, this was his fault. 
So that would um, Eli saying, stop claiming perfection. Stop claiming perfection. He's still in a little bit of rebellion. What are we talking about? For he added rebellion unto his sin, and he clapped his hands among us, and multiplied his wounds against God. That's what he's saying. Why God doing me this? Why God afflicting me? I keep in the law. I keep in the law. That's what God didn't understand. He was supposed to cut them train off. That's what he's saying. He was supposed to cut them off. He was he was he sacrifice the animal for them. Sacrifice the animal for them. Sacri let them come and sacrifice the animal for themselves. <laughs> That's what he's saying. He was doing what? He was. He, he was because of the answers for wicked men. He was sacrificing for them. They should let them sacrifice for themselves. Go to um, Job chapter forty. Let me let, 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 Job thirty. Read Job chapter thirty and verse thirty. Let me show you something. Job chapter thirty verse thirty. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burned with heat. So Job saying what? He's black. His skin is black. He's black. He's black. He's given his identity, his nationality. He say what? His skin is black upon me. It's a parable. This is a deep parable. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burned with heat. Do you see that? He <laughs> see, I am black. You need to pay attention. He's telling you here. Go to um, Job chapter 40, verse 1 to 14. Job 40, 1 through 14. Job 40 and 1. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contended with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproved God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand up my, upon my mouth. So he listened to the advice of Eli who. You see that? He acknowledged. <laughs> he said, What? I am vile. I, mean, I messed up. I messed up. I acknowledge my sin. Eli said, Confess his sin. Confess the fault. Stop blaming God. You see what? I am vile. He tell the most I am vile. What shall I answer thee? What are going to say to your Lord? I, I, I vile, I condone them sin of them children. I will lay my hand upon my mouth. He said, I go hold my peace, Lord. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Yes, twice, but I will proceed no further. You see what? He said, Lord, I ain't saying nothing. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Good up thy loins now like a man. He said, Stand up like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. He said, What I'm going to ask you, answer me. Will thou also disown all my judgment? He said, Will you disown all my judgment? With a, a, a chastisement, you children of Israel scattered in the diaspora. Will you disown all the judgment of the Most High God for our violation that we scattered us in the chapter of slavery? Will you disown all? Will thou condemn me? Will you condemn God? Will you blame God? You see that God forsaken me. God said, well, acknowledge your sin. You violated my law. You're in the midst of sin and repent and come back to the law. That's what the Most High is saying. That thou mayest be righteous. You see that you're justifying yourself. Your wickedness is justifying your sin. You see that? But I'm a good person, and I'm a good person, I'm a good, you see, see that? Those I say, stop justifying yourself. Acknowledge your sin, you're in the midst of sin, you're in the midst of adultery, and whoredom, murder, raping, you see that? Lust, extortion, lying, stealing. Most I say, acknowledge your sin, confess your sin, stop covering them. You see, like Eli covered for his sons, you see, Job sacrificing for his children. Confess your sins. Has thou an arm like God? He said, you have the power like me? The most I say, what, you have the power like me? Or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency. Do what? Deck yourself with majesty and excellency. Come back to your royalty. Come back to your God status. Come back into the palace of rulership. Come into my kingdom. Most I say, come and be king. Be a kingdom of priests and kings to me. Be gods again. You see what? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency. You are the gods of this earth. You see that? You are the peculiar people, the treasure of the most high God. You say, come back to your royalty. Lift your head up. Come out and stop embracing downhills. Talking about my block and my hood. You see that? My street. What's I say? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency and array thyself with glory and beauty. You are the gods. You are the gods in the earth. The kings in the earth. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath and behold everyone that is proud and abase him. Look on everyone that is proud and bring him low and bring down the wicked in their place. You see that? You need to pay attention. You see what? Bring down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. You see that your own right hand will save you. Repent and come back to the law. Repent and come back to the law. Job chapter 42, I read in verse 1, go down. Do you see the, the, what is it? The mystery concerning the book of Job. Let's go. Am I just making this up? Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Did Job say what? I know, no, most of you are the all seeing, the all knowing. Who is he that had that counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not, things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. The most Job said, Whoever I ask the Lord, answer me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. 
But now my eyes see thee. The Job say, I'm seeing you, Mosai. Wherefore I abhor myself. I hate myself. That we saying, I hate the sin, the sinful man that I was, the wicked, evil man that I was. You see that? In this flesh, the evil man, before I repent and come back to the Lord, you see what? Job say what? I abhor myself. And repent in dust and ashes. You see what? I, I repent in dust and ashes, begging for your mercy. You see that? That you receive me. And you forgive me my transgression and my iniquity. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Timonite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. For ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job had. You see that? You see what? He said Job just what? Confess his sin. Confess, he confessed. Therefore take unto you, you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a bone offering. You see that? Go and, do it. Go and sacrifice. And my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept. Lest I deal with you after your folly. You see that? In that you have not spoken of me the thing which is right. Like my servant Job. Job confessed his sin. He said, you are the, you are the highest. You are the most power, powerful. You are the all-seeing. I wicked as hell. So Eliphaz the Timonite and Bilad and the Shuhite and Zophar the Nematite went and did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job. You see that the Most High said, because he confessed his sin and he acknowledged the power of the Most High. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Stop, 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 stop. Was Job in any captivity? It's a parable of the children of Israel. The Most High said what? And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Go to Isaiah 5 and 13. The captivity of Job. Go to Isaiah 5 verse 13. Therefore, my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge. The children of Israel are going into captivity from the 70, 80 till now. Because they have what? No knowledge. Malachi 2 and 7, the priest's lips will keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his lips. You've forgotten the law, forsaken the law. You're in the midst of sin. Or you curse me. That will most say according to Job 1 and 5. And the honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up and thirst. Therefore, hell hath enlarged himself and herself. You're in the midst of your hell or your captivity. Captivity is hell because of what? You are princes and royalty. That was what Moses just said. You are princes and royals, but you are in hell. You are in your captivity. Because what? So Moses what? Go to um, Isaiah 11 and 11. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria. The people that come into the Assyrian captivity, the northern Assyrian captivity, the northern ten tribes, and from Egypt, and from Patros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shena, and from Hamath, and from the island of the sea, the twelve tribes of Israel scattered in the diaspora. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. You see that? And gather the, together the dispersed of Judah, northern kingdom, southern kingdom, from the four corners of the earth. From the where? Four corners of the earth, where he scattered us. Go back to Job 42 and 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job, the children of Israel scattered in the four corners of the earth. You see that? The outcasts of Israel and the disposed of Judah. You need to pay attention. Who in their hell? Who, according to Isaiah 5 13. Hell hath enlarged itself. My people going into captivity. You need to understand. The parable of the children of Israel. Job is a Edomite. It's simple as hell. You see that? And the Job 42 and 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of, church, of Job, the children of Israel, when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. A double, you see that? What the children of Israel had in the beginning, what he said in chapter 40, you're going to be what? Royals. Royals again. Deck thyself, for, chapter 40 verse 10, Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. You need to pay attention. Go back to 42 and verse 10. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. You see that? Excellency, royalty, come back as gods. You see that? As princesses and, and kings. Princes, kings, princes with royalty. Lords, governors. You see that? Priests, a kingdom of priests. I give it twice as much as he had. You see that? What he had in the beginning? Twice. Double what King Solomon had. Double what King David had. You see that? He told you want gold? Look gold. You want rubies? Look rubies. You need, you need to pick. Repent and come back to the laws. Verse 11. Then came there unto him, all his brethren, his what? His brethren and all his sisters. You see that? His brethren and his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house. They what? They eat bread with him and they bemoaned, bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. The most I said, I'm going to try it behind. But, but what is the reward in the end? I give him twice as much because he endured. He endured and he confessed his sin. The key is what? Verse 6. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. When Job acknowledged his sin, he acknowledged his transgression. That way the Moses said, okay, no, you're good. I will accept you. And he gave him what? Twice as the reward for the kingdom. Immortality. That we're talking about. Twice as much as he had before. Then what? And jump to verse 
11. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all that they had been of his acquaintance before all his friends would come back and did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. The children of Israel. Do you see that? Let's go to Daniel 9 and 11. Upon what? All the evil that the Lord brought upon him. Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Read 10. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws which he said before us by his servants the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey the voice, the laws and the commandments. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath of captivity, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servants of God, because we have sinned against him, and he had confirmed his word, which he spake against us, the children of Israel, and against our judges, that judge us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven had not been done as had been done upon Jerusalem. That we're talking about. Nobody under heaven get this, this, this judgment that we're talking about. That great evil. And they comforted him, back to Job 42 and verse 11, and they comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. You see that? As the Bible read in Daniel 9 and 11, for under the whole heaven had not been done as had been done upon Jerusalem, the throne of Israel scattered from 70 to now. That we're still talking about the Lord, the Lord will turn the captivity. And every man also gave him a piece of money, and everyone an airing of gold. So they, they rewarded him. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep. You see that? He had what? 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels. You need to understand. 14 and 6 is 20. Divide by 2, 10 tribes. The 10 northern tribes. You need to pay attention. It's the same thing he's telling you. It's the 10 northern tribes. You bring them back together. 14,000 14, sheep and 6,000 camels. And 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 she asses. You see that? 10. The ten tribes, the ten tribes, you see that one zero, the ten tribes, the 14, 14 and 6 is 20 divided by 2, 10. It's always talking about 10, the tribes of Israel. Am I making it up? And a thousand she asked this. Go to Mark chapter 8, 19. Mark chapter 8 and verse 19. Mark chapter 8, because he given twice as much as he had. Mark chapter 8, verse 19. And when I break the five loaves and the five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took he up? And they said unto him, twelve. So that was five and five. What do you have here? And he gave him what? A thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand chiasses. So the five and five is ten. I get a double everything. It's the ten tribes he's talking about. It's parables. And when, and they said twelve. So the ten tribes, the twelve tribes. Five and five is ten. Ten northern tribes, the twelve, the twelve tribes, United Kingdom. And when the seven amongst four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took he up? And they say seven. Seven and seven is fourteen and four thousand, one hundred and forty-four thousand. You need to pay attention. Of the children of Israel, Revelation, the, the, the um, and they said 4,000. Go to Revelation chapter 7 verse 4. Revelation 7 and 4. Because they say, And the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments he have? And they said seven. Revelation 7 verse 4. Revelation chapter 7 verse 4. 144,000. Revelation 7 and verse 4. And I saw, I read from verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seed of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed, and hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. You see that? Of the tribe of Judah, twelve thousand. Twelve thousand from each tribe. So that hundred and forty and four thousand. You see that we keep talking about? Seven, seven. Seven among, and when the seven among the four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took you back to Mark 8 and 9, 20? And they said seven. Seven and seven is 14 and 4,000, 144,000 of, of the children of Israel. That's what he's talking about. It's parables, deep parables. Go back to Job 42 and verse 16, 42 and verse 13. He had also seven sons and three daughters. Seven and three is what? Ten, the northern ten tribes. He's from who? The, he's Issachar's son. From the northern kingdom. You need to pay attention. That's all he's telling you. And he called the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second Kizia and the name of the third Kiram Papush. And in all the land there was no woman found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. What inheritance among their brethren? And after this lived Job 140 years. Job lived 140 years. And his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. A generation is what? A thousand years. So he what? He lived 140 years and what? Four generations. 144,000. 
You need to pay attention. There's 12 tribes of Israel. That's all he's talking about. You see that? 144,000. After the Job lived, 140 years, and his sons and his sons' sons, and four generations. 144, a generation is 1,000. 144,000, 144,000 of the 12 tribes. You see that he's going to rule Israel. You need to pay attention. That's all he's talking about. So I pray you get some understanding from the class. The mystery concerning the book of Job. Job is no Edomite. You see that? It's a parable about the children of Israel going into captivity. The most I trust me behind. Put some of it to death. You see that? Um, afflict me with, with, with bondage. You see that? Sickness. All of we sick in your mind. We sick in your body. We sick every how. Spiritually. And then what? When we repent and confess, we sin like Job just said in, in chapter 42 and verse 6. Wherefore I abhor myself. I hate myself for the wickedness I've done. The sick, the sick transgression and iniquities I've done. And repent in dust and ashes. Repent and come back to the Lord. The most I say, I accept Job. It, uh, verse, verse 9. And the Lord accepted Job. I'm going to accept you and take you back in my kingdom. You're going to get immortality. That we're talking about of the 144,000. It's easy to understand. And the multitude who will follow, who will obey and repent. I hope you get some understanding from today's class. Shalom.